e-waste. I've got a desk full of it. What I plan to do with all of this is turn some of these into a PP9 so that I can power vintage radios. If you want to see how to do it, stick around and we'll get into it. Okay, so what do we need to turn this e-waste into a PP9 battery? Okay, a little word about these modules that we're going to be using for this project. And as you see, there's actually quite a big board there, but there are actually four on this board. Now, I bought them in batches of 10, and 10 of them cost under four pounds. Uh, I think they were free shipping, but if they weren't, the shipping wasn't a great deal. So you do get quite a number for your money, and it makes the project extremely cheap to do. What you do have to be aware of is the boards you're looking at have both this inductor on them and let me just put that straight this variable potentiometer on the board um, where's that one there and there and that's what you've got to look out for because any of the others usually mean they're fixed boards without a voltage change i will put a link to these boards uh, and the seller from aliexpress where i got them from china they arrived within 14 days so i'm not too upset about the shipping time and as i say for the price it's a lot cheaper than ebay now you can buy them on ebay i just haven't looked for them there because i knew they'd be more expensive than buying direct from china the first thing i think we'll do is i'll show how to take apart these items now you'll need a pair of pipe pliers or some sort of pliers and the easiest way I've found of doing these is to simply grip them and pull them apart and you do it at both ends like that and what appears in the case of these larger ones and you have to be careful not to short anything out. Is a large battery rated at 1,500 milliamp hours. With these smaller ones, you know, you are left with a battery. So the first, the first step to do is actually to ignore the battery and the wire on the little circuit board and prepare your PP9 battery. And the best way to get these open is brute force. If you get something reasonably heavy and just along the top of this seam line, just give it a few <coughs> taps. And as you see, it splits off. Now I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do the same <coughs> on that side oh. and the top just comes off like that. Now what you do is you can just pull that out and you're left with the bottom case. You get a Chinese menu and a bit of cardboard and you're left with the, the dead pile. What you will need to do oh, is get your solder and your soldering iron and just try and melt that solder. Now you could if you want just cut the wires off it is up to you and if you're not careful you will get wax on your bench where this has melted so I'm just going to turn it over on that. I'm going to do the top side as well. There we go. So now we have our battery box empty. Before we get to play with the battery, let's prepare the circuit board. We'll get the two bits of wire, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those in half. Like that. And get one set. Strip off the ends. I'm going to do both ends. Ends. 
and then I'm going to twist them. So there we go. Then we get our soldering iron. We get our solder and we just tin the ends. Everything's ready to connect to this board. Now it's fairly straightforward. What you have is you have battery minus and plus. You have output minus and plus. And you also have an in option. It's up to you if you want to use the in or the USB socket. Now I'm going to use the USB socket because it's the standard socket and it makes it very easy to just connect everything to it. What we will have to do is we'll have to connect this and we can either poke them through or you can lay them on top. Now if you're going to lay them on top you're going to need to cut these down so that there's very little of the wire left. You also want to prep the board by tinning the two pads. It all depends on which which type you have as to which way round everything goes. So check your own board. You connect your two wires up to your battery terminals and then you have a choice. You can either rewire your PP9 lid or you can use the existing wires. Now I'm of a mind to just use the existing wires. So again, I'm just going to trim them down so that there's very little exposed. And then I'm going to solder, first of all, the negative, because that's the shortest one. I'm just going to sh short it to the output terminal short it, solder it to the output terminal and then again just tap that on like that. So maybe you'll do a better job of it than I will. That's better. So you've got the red wire on the V out the black wire on the V out, and that's on V out negative. It would be if I'd soldered it on properly. Ah oh dear, I'm getting bad at this soldering lark. I should really give up and retire, shouldn't I? All that's left now is to put your battery on these two terminals here. Now again, I'm just going to trim them down a little bit. So we've got a little bit too much wire hanging out. We're going to get our battery and where you've already got the existing wire there's a solder tab and I'm just going to desolder the existing wire like that and again I'm going to do the same at the front end. Now that's under this bit of capped on tape so you might need a knife or something to cut it. If I'm lucky I'm going to be able to peel it off like that. I'm just going to lift the tab off the battery slightly. I don't want to pull it too hard because I don't want to break it off the battery making the entire cell useless. So there we go. Just take that off. Again I'm going to in the pad and then I'm going to put my first battery wire on. Now some people would do negative first, others are reckless like I am and do positive first. Now the thing is this battery may well still have a, quite a charge in it. What you don't want to do is short it out in any way, shape or form. And again, on the bottom side, I'm just going to tin the battery tab, connect the wire, a lot smoother and there we have 
a complete battery, what I would suggest doing is putting some tape across the terminals there. I'm just going to put that across the terminals. If I haven't stuck it to itself already. Like that. And I'm also going to get another piece of tape. go round the cell because we don't want it shorting out with anything else either so we're just going to wrap the cell now say so you can use insulation tape it's just that I've got captain tape to hand well I do have insulation tape to hand as well and let's just cut that Go. and that pretty much is all there is to it now you can double sided sticky this down now that you've got the capped on down there or you can leave it loose what you do have to do though is charge it so put in your your lead and you'll see that the red light comes on and then we leave that until it turns green. Okay, the battery is fully charged. Here we go, ready to test. Now, before you actually connect it to a radio, I would suggest testing the voltage. And the easiest way to do this is get your multimeter, just touch the terminals of the battery, and you're gonna need some form of little screwdriver. I'm using my radio trimmer tool. And you just want to Go onto the pot. Now you have to be gentle because these are small components. And you try turning it one way. Oh, here we go. I've gone too far past the nine volt mark. Let's just, just trying to be super, super critical here. There we go. It's now dead on nine volts. So whatever this battery is putting out is getting boosted up to 9 volts DC and that will be ideal to power the radio. So that's really the last stage of this that we ever have to do except for putting it all in its box. Stick the capped on tape back down, put the battery in its box, put the board in its box and I'm going to make sure that the top fits round or did it go the other way round? Yes it went that way round because that's how the, the crack was. It's fairly sort of solid as it was but just to make sure I'm going to put a thin line of insulation tape just round the top that's all we need to do let me just pull that off and fold that tight we have a fully made unit we need to get a radio and uh, let's have a look see what I've got to hand well there seems to be a hunter under my bench so let's put that on the bench, turn the meter off, put that to one side, so I won't need that, and let's open it up and put a battery in it. Now these just fit on as a normal battery, like that, now assuming that everything is right with this radio, um, it does say it's uh, been tested and it's just cosmetic work that needs to be done so let's put the batteries down in the box these modern ever readies are tight in the sets so you might struggle I'm not going to go all the way with this you've got one that goes sideways and one that goes vertically let's try medium wave And as you see, we are powering the radio on two recycled batteries from X vapor making e-waste that was thrown on the floor. The whole project has cost actually less than two pounds. Now, 
what can I say about that sort of cost? A brand new PP9 is $4.99. And I've recycled some old rubbish, put a, ch put a modern Chinese module with them, and here we are. We have what is effectively a new battery for this radio that is working perfectly well. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. If it's of use to you, let me know in the comments if there's anything you're unsure of. Please, again, let me know in the comments. Always good to hear from people to see what they think of these things and uh, how useful they find it. With that, I'm going to say goodbye until the next time and hopefully I won't be as long making another video. I say this every time. Anyway, good night, good luck, good building. Enjoy. Thank you very much.